Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to digitalize your vinyls. Now, some people have parents or grandparents that had old vinyls and they would like to import them to their computer so they could uh, play off their computer or sync to their phones. And right here, I've got um, Hotel California by the Eagles and I'm going to import this as an example to show you guys how to import a vinyl so I'm going to take off this um, the cover real quick this is I forget what kind of turntable this is I'll put a link in the description below I got this turntable off eBay it's honestly not the best turntable in the world since it's only 35 bucks it's really good for the price but it's not the best turntable in the world. Alright, so here we go. I've got this uh, turntable. And usually, um, before each time you play off a turntable, you want to use anti-static cleaner. This can help remove any uh, loose particles or dust that the stylus or the needle picked up after um, playing on the last record. So you want to keep it clean because over time the stylus can um, it can have a lot of dust on it and it won't sound as good. It, all, it also might damage your vinyls if it's really uh, not kept clean. So I'm going to show an example of what to do when you, when you want to clean your stylus. So let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so here we go. I've got um, it zoomed in right on the stylus, and I'm um, taking this out of it, uh, out of the packaging. I, I like to keep it in the packaging just to keep it safe, so it doesn't um, end up somewhere and I can't find it. So here I am um, taking the lid off of cleaning solution or whatever it's called. Put a drop of it on here, and then I'm putting the cap back on the stylus cleaner. And there's a certain way you want to clean your stylus. You want to do it back to front. You don't want to do it front to back or side to side. That's what I've learned because um, it could make the needle go in the wrong direction. So there's not really enough space here um, to move the brush under it. So I'm just picking up the tone arm. I'm starting back to front. And you can do this as many times as necessary. I think once or twice is enough. Okay, so now I'm going to take the record out of its um, sleeve. Okay, so now I'm going to put the record onto the turntable. And you want to make sure your vinyl is clean. You can use like a, a cloth like this. And um, it might also be helpful if you spin the record with the cloth on it. So that way uh, you don't have to worry about um, spinning the cloth all the, all the way around the record. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your record is plugged in. I'm not sure if yours works the same as mine, but um, right here I have uh, the record. Well, actually, hold on. Um, let me unplug plug that in. And, and now the turntable um, turned on. Alright, so now that the turntable is on, and the way this turntable works is there is no play button, unfortunately. Um, but uh, whenever I pick up the tone arm and move it towards the record, the turntable starts to spin. So here we go. I am cleaning the record. And then, I'm assuming there be some dust right where I had the cloth. So I'm just going to brush this off the record. Okay, so it's all clean now, and I'm going to jump on the computer real quick and show you guys which, um, what I'd recommend you use on the computer to record the vinyl because there is no faster way that I know of to import uh, the record. So I'll be back in a second. Hey guys, so right now we're on the computer and... Uh, what you will need, what most people recommend using to record vinyls is a program called Audacity. This program is free. I'll put a link to uh, 
to download and install it in the description below. So let me open up that. So just open up Audacity and here we go with Audacity. And what you will need to do to start recording is hit this record button. Uh, be before you do that, you want to make sure that uh, actually th this is the USB microphone to um, my desktop microphone. And the one below that is the one to my turntable. So you want to make sure it says microphone and in parentheses USB microphone. And you can make this mono or stereo. With mono you hear both both left and right channels are the same and stereo is the original where um, not everything is the same you've got like the bass and drums in the left channel and the guitar and the keyboards or whatever in the right channel and uh, you can set your speakers to whatever um, I set my recording level down a little bit because um, it's always be be better to make the recording level too low, you can always raise the volume later. But if it's too loud, there's nothing you can do. It sounds very, um, there's a lot of distortion going on, so it's not good to make it too loud. So I'll be back on the camcorder with how, with how to show you how to put the needle on the vinyl and start playing. So I'm gonna hit record and uh, I'll show you what to do. All right, for for playing your vinyl, what you need to do is release the tone arm. Uh, since mine is a manual, uh, what you'll need to do is to raise your tone arm. It's got this little um, lever right here. And you carefully move it down until it hits the edge of the vinyl. And you can raise the volume, you can let it play it's already recording on the computer and I'll show you what to do once it's all done alright we're back in audacity and I ended the recording the first thing you want to do is uh, you want to go to effect and normalize and you want to normalize this because you want to raise the volume to as loud as um, you want to raise the volume so it's loud enough to hear but it's not too loud um, past 0 dB which um, things get um, really distorted past 0 dB so if you just normalize it to negative 1 that's fine okay so here we've got it normalized you see uh, the audio levels have um, been raised I'm gonna redo normalize so you can see um, so here we go um, as you can hear right um, you can hear the turntable start to, or the, the needle just start to hit the turntable right now. Or, sorry, the needle start to hit the vinyl right now. And this section right here, wh what you want to do is you want to uh, just choose a few sections of it. Um, I can't really hear it. I, well, I've got the speakers turned off because I don't want the speakers to get in the way of the um, the tutorial but um, imagine that this is just the pops and crackles of the vinyl what you want to do is just highlight that section of the pops and crackles and go to noise reduction hit get noise profile and if you want to remove it from the whole recording you can go to effects and back to noise reduction and hit OK. Make sure the entire thing is highlighted before you apply the effect because it's only going to apply to this portion or if, if nothing is highlighted then nothing is going to be um, affected. So it's applying right now and, and once you're done with applying the effect you can hear a small difference. Maybe uh, the noise won't be completely removed but you will get um, it, it will be enhanced. So now that you've normalized it and reduced the, the pops and crackles, you can start to name your tracks. The process is fairly simple. It's, uh, well, it's kind of a hassle to do. I, I, I wish I knew of a faster way. The way I know it is that you would listen to a recording like on YouTube and compare it to the version that you have and try and figure out where the start or the end of each song is and then you would hit control B you'd go to tracks 
and then down to add label at selection it says control B right there and then you would add a name like Hotel California of course I can't I cannot hear the recording because I turn my speakers off I don't know if this is the right place but I'm just gonna add it here as a demonstration and uh, your first label would start your um, recording once you export it so you would export multiple and uh, I recommend you do uh, mp3 even though that's not the highest quality that's just the recommended one because uh, there was like a little manual that came with my turntable it said mp3 I'm pretty sure you can do it with other of these um, usually wave files are higher quality so you can do wave I'm just gonna do mp3 uh, I recommend you do variable best quality of course that takes up a little bit of space but um you can do it fast if you want and then once you export it uh, you can type in the artist's name and album name and everything and then it will export once you're done filling that out for every single track so this is a quick tutorial of how to do all of this and uh, hopefully you learned how to uh, uh, import your vinyls digital version and um, uh, and by importing vinyls this way it both saves money but once again you need to think about the quality it's not as high of a quality as uh, on iTunes or on a CD or anything like that because there are the pops and crackles too with the vinyl so uh, thank you for watching this tutorial if you have any questions ask me I'll get back to your questions as soon as possible and uh, I thought this, this was a cool thing to share. And thank you for watching.